Where am I at? I'm not in my class. This is her classroom. Layla what? Bremer. What? In this video, I'm going to do a little field trip to one of my friends and co-workers, Layla Bremer. She has incorporated 3D printing in her classroom, and I want her to kind of express what she's experienced since having a 3D printer. So, Layla Bremer? Okay, so <laughs> one of the main things I'm using my 3D printer is for an incentive, not only in my classroom, but um, the homework that I do provide mm -hmm. has to do with our reading log because I want them to continue their passion for reading outside of our daily five in class mm -hmm. and their good fit books and finding time to read at home. Mm -hmm. So um, that is towards their reading logs. They earn uh, stickers on the sticker chart. Right Just here. like a behavior chart. A lot of people use them for behavior. And so every week they get a sticker and then at the end of five weeks or five in a row, mm -hmm. after a whole row of um, getting those reading logs in, then they get the gold star or a star, and that indicates they have earned a charm on their reading ninja uh, necklace. So before we had um, had other charms, you were doing 3D charms for my kids, yep. and they loved it so much, and I wanted some flexibility of what I wanted to have them be able to select themselves, and just having access to the thing uh, thingiverse. And so this is just an example of one of my kids' necklaces. And again, this started up with the charms uh, mid-year. Mm -hmm. uh, I came up with it. We had our beads only, and then we came up with, you know what, you've been earning a whole row for a while. I, I, you know, there should be something. Let's in, um, implement the charms with a 3D printer. Mm -hmm. So that's one way we started the 3D printer implementation and then uh, I had access to your 3D printer for those that had enough points on their class dojo yep. um, at the end of Friday on Fridays my kids look at their behavior card because I give out stars for their daily dojos so if you had a perfect day you get two stars on uh, a pretty good day. You only had one or two reminders. You get one star. Yeah. And then too many, is, you don't get stars. But at the end of the week on Friday, they ask for the rewards. They have a list of rewards. Well, one of them is very high. It's 100 points or yeah. 100 stars. It's 3D printer. So a couple of the th things that um, might come out of it, depending on the student and what they want to select from. Again, they use Thingiverse. And it's bigger than a charm it takes more time but again they've had to use a hundred of their points to do that so the kids like to um, try to save as much as they can just so they can get their 3d printer and normally within a week of my kids would can get up to 10 mm -hmm. uh, points a day if they're doing perfect behavior so you think about after 10 weeks they they have earned this if they've saved enough and yeah. It flies by pretty fast, and this is my favorite. Do you feel like that from from the time that you started incorporating these charms, all these these charms and everything, uh -huh. do you feel like you, you've seen a, a huge, I don't know, a huge number of kids wanting to read more or taking more ownership in their reading? Um, to earn these prizes and these rewards? Right. Instead of the standard, you know, the typical um, number of students, these are the normal kids that turn in their homework reading log. Then they, once those kids started really filling their, their charms, they had two to three charms mm -hmm. on their necklace now. Then I started getting pretty much almost a whole class. I have I have a few that um, still need that additional support. I'm trying to tie in after school, yeah. trying to help sign off on those reading logs mm -hmm. as well, just so the students that are not getting that home support but getting it here can still get the um, credit for that oh, yeah. reading time because they're working hard towards their reading, and I want to acknowledge that. Yeah. Yeah. So you personalize it. And, oh, snap. <laughs> so right now we're printing out uh, a charm. A little dolphin. Mm -hmm. There it is. 
And it fits perfectly on those um, ball chains. And we were talking about next year, just as a uh, grade level, uh, earning money, selling this with our third graders. We'll print out charms and we'll sell it to the school as a fundraiser for our class fund and, and being able to pay for our field trips yep. and things like that. So it eases the burden on how many field trips we can actually go on as opposed to what is actually uh, available for our parents to pay for and things yeah. like that. We want to help out as much as we po uh, possibly can in these tough times. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So how many 3D printers do you have right now? I have one running right now, but I went ahead and I bought another one because I am so pleased with the the quality of this printer. Mm -hmm. And I saw your printers and no hate in your game. I love this printer. Yeah. I, it really functions at a level where I don't have the knowledge of exactly what's what, but I, we put it together and I ran it and I asked you like, just, just watch me. I want to be able to um, fill in, I want to put in the filaments myself. I want to be able to troubleshoot myself. Mm -hmm. So just stand by, let me do it, and I'm, I can get weary when it comes to technology like a 3D printer, mm -hmm. but I am computer savvy, it's just mechanics, and I get a little weary, and it was totally fine, oh, yeah. especially if you have somebody, or the YouTube channels have a lot of... Um, yeah, there's a lot of support for her um, 3D printer. She has a Monoprice Select Mini, and it's yeah. a very popular uh, 3D printer. Uh, on Amazon, uh, when we purchased the first one, it was it was one hundred ninety nine dollars when she purchased it. It's right. now like two hundred and twelve, two hundred and fifteen dollars right now. Still good price for right. what you're getting. Right. And, and like no I said, shipping. I oh, yeah. so I went ahead and I bought another one because um, now we can really make it happen for our uh, grade level idea. Yeah. Oh yeah. And for my classroom. Uh, incentives with the 3d printer the support that comes with monoprice select there's so many videos on YouTube there's so many websites that you can go on where if anything happens you can really kind of look up research it yourself and try to troubleshoot it it's very easy to use but with all the support it's definitely easy to use because of the, all that yep. and so this is Layla's computer that she uses for her Monoprice Select Mini. So I'll let her kind of explain how she gets her prints going. Okay, so off a of Thingiverse, I have found several charms. I downloaded the char uh, the file, and when I download it, I open up that file and look for the STL. I save that STL into a folder I've labeled 3D Prints. Um, that way the students, when they come to look at the 3D prints for the charms we have selected, they're already in a folder. From my folder, I drag the STL um, to the Cura. I drag it right on top of the Cura so it registers it. The link for this cat charm will be in the description. Uh, go ahead, Layla. So I have my STL file now dragged into the Cura. And this is our cat file. I've noticed that this charm is pretty big as is. So we, I have dragged this down to or scale it down. Mm -hmm. You have to pick the scale button. It's right here. And then I take that top blue uh, box to scale it down to 0.7. Um, that seems to be actually just right for our key necklaces, mm -hmm. keychain necklaces. And so that's only 12 minute print. Actually, that's one of the longer prints that I have. Most of them are under 10, which is not bad at all. So I go right into this other button right here that says print with the USB. I'm already hooked up into my mono price. And it says that it's going to be 12 minutes to print it. Now you press connect and then it's detecting it. Then I'll press print. And off we go. My bed is going to warm up and I have it at a temperature of 215 right now. And for the small charms, I've noticed if it was 210, it started curling up 
upwards, um, especially if it has a tail. Um, the dolphin has a tail, so it's sort of really uh, bending forward mm -hmm. uh, or upwards. And so we changed it to 215. Actually, I did. Mm -hmm. I changed it to 215 through troubleshooting. And uh, these charms don't require a raft. If I put a raft on it, it just it's too thin and it just breaks apart um, my charm. Yeah. So, and in my in my personal opinion too, this is a heavier priced item that you would purchase for your classroom mm -hmm. or more expensive item. And so I was um, weary about doing it and not having any clue what to do with it or now what do I do with this very expensive item that I'm not sure how to handle it myself, let alone have, have my students near it. And I wanted to make sure I was getting something that I was comfortable with and this was after watching several videos and, and seeing I, I determined that this is the one for me. It looks the most user friendly. In fact, with my sister who teaches in California, I told her we were making this video so she can see this and and hopefully see um, maybe that maybe this is what she's looking for um, her classroom. So thank you very much for allowing us to kind of see her classroom yeah. and also showing off her 3D printer, the Monoprice Select Mini, and what she does with that 3D printer. And I don't think it's going to be the last time you see of her. So. Oh goodness. <laughs> So we'll we'll probably do some more videos. Okay. <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> See you next time.